In the last video I uploaded, we visited a Lee Nielsen hand tool event, and that was a woodworking show, but it's one of the places that I go to sell my, my goods as a blacksmith. And I thought that would be a good opportunity to just discuss selling at shows. We've talked about should you sell your work, how to price your work, but we haven't really talked too much about where do you sell your work. And one of the obvious places to start is going to some kind of an event or a show where you sell directly to the customer one-on-one. -on -one. So you go to where they're going to be and you, you sell to them. The obvious place to start is typically a craft show or an arts and craft fair or something of that sort. And we are now getting into the time of year where the arts and craft show in preparation for the holiday season are in full swing. As a matter of fact, in a few more weeks, they'll start dropping off. Because when you get closer to the holidays, people have already done a lot of their shopping and the shows aren't as common. But in the end of October, early November, there are a lot of small community arts and craft shows, church bazaars, getting ready for Christmas sales, things like that. And those are sometimes a reasonable place to sell your work, especially if you're just getting into selling your work. When you start looking at going to shows like this and selling work, you need to take a lot of things into consideration. The first thing is, will it really be profitable? And what is your purpose of going? If you're going to make money, can you make money at a show? And my experience with the smaller arts and craft shows is no, you really can't. But it's a good place to get some exposure. It's a good place for you to get used to dealing with people, what questions people are going to ask, how do you set up a booth, because they're usually relatively inexpensive and there's usually one in your neighborhood. So you're probably only going to travel 15, 20 miles from home, you know, get up in the morning at home, you can go to the show, you can set up, you can spend the day at the show, tear down, come home. You're not out a lot of time, you're not out a lot of expense. Most of them are going to be $25 to $50 for a table fee, some of them even less than that. So it's not a huge expense in either time or money, but think about what the expenses are. For me, my average overhead runs about 50% of what I make. So if I sell $100 worth of product at a show, I've invested $50 in that product. So my net income is another $50. If I spent $50 on the, the booth space to go to that show, then I broke even and I made $0 for my time and my effort to make the product. Zero dollars for my travel time to the show and zero dollars for my time sitting in front of the table. So you need to think about that when you do it. It's still worthwhile when you're first starting out because you've got to get the experience. You've got to get the experience making the product. And even if you're selling it not making much money, it can still be worth doing. But I wouldn't do it a lot if you're not making a lot of money. And you need to take that into account. It's often said that in business you need to spend money to make money. And I find that is true with shows. The shows that I do better at are the ones that I have to travel cross country and I spend two or three days on the road and I have hotel expenses and travel expenses and more expensive meals out and usually end up having to pay $700 to $1,000 for booth space. But those are also the ones that I take thousands of dollars worth of product to and can expect to actually do okay at. So it's, there's really a give and take there. When you're starting off, the smaller shows are probably a good idea and they're worth doing, but you're not gonna get rich doing it. Now that's not to say that some people aren't more successful at those shows than I am. I know blacksmiths whose primary income is show-based, but they're quite picky about what shows they do. Just because it's a craft show or an art show doesn't mean they're all created equally. And it pays to explore some of the possibilities, both in your area and within whatever you consider a reasonable travel distance. You know, we live in Southern Colorado, going to a big art show in Denver would be way more effective for me than going to the little art and craft show right here in Beulah, which pretty much everybody here in Beulah is looking to spend five bucks and they've got a $20 budget for the whole day. So I don't sell much at a show here in Beulah. But if I were to invest in going to the Cherry Creek Arts Festival, 
which is probably a juried show, and I'd probably have to spend several months getting product ready. But that's the kind of show where I might actually make pretty good money if I was making the things that the people who go to that show are looking for. So it does pay for you to do your research, both at what the shows are like, and maybe even go to the shows a year before you want to set up at the show and see what kind of things are being sold. Or is it all $5 items? Or is it all $1,000 items? What price range are these customers coming to spend? Do people pay to get into the show? If they pay to get into the show to buy, they are way more serious than a show that the public just comes in for free. Because those people sometimes are just killing an hour or two, and they aren't really there to buy anything. So it really pays to do your homework. Talk to people that have been to the show. Like I say, if you can visit the show before you ever apply to attend the show as a vendor, you'll know what to expect. And I think that's very important when you're getting ready to do these shows. If you're doing it on the spur of the moment, sometimes the little local arts and craft shows are all there is available. Frequently those are not juried. A juried show means you have to submit pictures of your work and a committee decides if you're up to the standard that they have for the show. Those are going to be better shows. The, the juried show is likely to have higher quality work, which means generally a higher price point, and the customers that come to those shows are expecting to buy better things. The non-juried shows, probably the people are expecting cheaper work, and you may be set up with some very fine iron work right next to somebody whose primary tool is a hot glue gun, and their primary material are popsicle sticks and glitter. And that's a whole different aspect and chances are if people are there to look at that low-end craft work they aren't going to be willing to spend good money on high-end iron work. So you need to, to really think about that before attending a show. The small shows, small items, make little key fobs, bottle openers, all sorts of wall hooks, S hooks, J hooks, drive hooks, things like that. But you're going to have to sell a whole lot of $5 items, $10 items, $20 items to have a good show. Whereas if you're making high-end iron work and you're doing maybe iron furniture, which I've never really done, but you're making chairs and benches and things like that that sell for two or $3,000, you might only have to sell one or two of those to have a really good show. So there's a whole lot of things to consider before making the commitment to go to any kind of a specific show. Now the other type of show is an invitation only show. And those are the ones that I seem to do best at because I am invited to come to the show based on my past performance and the work that I have done previously. And those are things like the Lee Nielsen tool event like we went to. Lee Nielsen recognized my work. They knew that woodworkers were interested in it and that my customer base was very similar to their customer base. So it's beneficial to both of us for me to attend one of their events. But again, that's by invitation only. And you have to wait for the invitation. You don't just show up to the show or send them a letter and say, hey, what's it cost for me to go to the show? By the way, for me, the Lee Nielsen shows, they don't actually charge the guest demonstrators and the guest vendors to come to the show. We are simply invited to come. And that makes it a much more affordable show for us. So our only show expenses for something like that are the travel expenses to go to Denver. There's no booth space show, there's no expenses once we get there. It's not like a show in a convention center where you have to pay for every single thing that you might want. Do you want an extra chair? You need to pay for that. And want another table? There's a charge for that. You want somebody to help you carry in your, your crates? They're going to bill you for that. If you want internet access to, to bill credit cards, there's an expense for that. And it can get very expensive to go to some of these shows in a big convention center. But again, those are the places where you're going to have thousands of people with cash in hand waiting to give you their money. So all of that information may be a bit vague, and that's because there's such a wide variety of shows and different types of shows out there. So it pays to do your homework, talk to people who have been to the show, visit the show yourself a year ahead of time so you have an idea of what to expect, and then try a few. Go ahead and invest the time and the money to make some product that seems appropriate for the type of show, pay for the booth space, go to the show, do the best you can, but don't be disappointed if it isn't a big money maker. 
The first few you do probably won't be. You need that experience like you need experience in anything else to figure out what sells and what kind of show your work does best at. But if you want to sell at shows, not a bad way to go. It gives you the ability to make what you want to make. You make work when you want to work. You don't have to deal with a lot of customers over the phone or on the internet. You make your product, you load it up, you go to the show, you spend a long, hard weekend, and hopefully you do well. And in the long run, if you keep exploring it and you fine tune which shows, which products, what your target customer base is, you can do pretty well doing shows. For me, the best shows are the ones that are woodworking shows, and that's really who my target audience is. I don't do well at art and craft shows, so the woodworking shows like Woodworking in America, Handworks, the Lee Nielsen hand tool events, things of that sort are where I will continue to go for live events, and I only do two or three a year. I, my business is not based solely around that source of income, and to a large extent, the show is not always about selling things. Sometimes the show is about getting out and marketing yourself and marketing your product so that people see you in person. I have for quite some time had a fairly strong social media presence and that really helps people kind of understand and get to know you. But I found when I started doing the bigger shows and suddenly I was out in public and people were getting to meet me. Somehow that made me into a real person and my business really jumped up another step as a result of just being at the shows. And it wasn't just people who saw me at the show, it was people all over the country who knew I had been to the show. And it just gave me that little bit more legitimacy as a business, as a craft person to say, Oh, well, you know, I've been following them on Instagram, and they're out there, they're going to Handworks, they're going to Woodworking in America, they're all these Lee Nielsen hand tool events. They must be the real deal. I must be able to trust them, and I think I can work with them. And business became quite good, and I think the shows helped that, even if the shows weren't real profitable. I have talked to other vendors who don't sell anything at the shows. They go, they set up, they bring samples of their work, and... Sometimes they take orders, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're just there to talk to people. And they're spending $1,000, $2,000 in travel expenses, show expenses, hotel expenses, just to sit there and not sell anything because the marketing opportunity, the promotion for their business, promotion for themselves as a craftsman is worth it in the long run. So that's another side of the coin that you might want to consider. As a small blacksmith, you're just making leaves and S-hooks and roses and fireplace pokers and things like that that may not be as important. But if you're trying to specialize and focus on a certain niche in the world of blacksmithing and you can go to the places where your customer base is going, maybe you don't really have to make money at the shows. It's hard to say. I know I like to come home with cash in my pocket after I go to a show, but not everybody feels that way. So those are just some thoughts on going to shows, going to various live events. I hope that helps if you're thinking about it. I realize that this is not as timely as it could have been. I should have done this about a month ago so you could start getting ready for the seasonal shows that are already happening right now. But a lot of those you can probably still get into, especially the small local ones, the ones at the community church, the community center, things like that, frequently have room for one more person if you call them and ask them. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Love it if you hit that subscribe button. Then make time in your day to get out to your shop and make something. Stock up if you're going to a show because you're going to need stuff to sell. But do it safely. Wear your safety glasses. And we'll see you for the next one.